Welcome to the show. Today we're talking about back on market. What used to be the most deplorable stamp of rejection that's possible in real estate was back on market. Why is it back on the market, everyone says. You walk through with a buyer, even if you get to the door and get inside, it inevitably comes up. So what do you think is wrong with it? Like, it must be horrible. Mm, who knows? Maybe, but up until about 2020, uh, second quarter in Oklahoma City and similar markets across the US, back on market was a stamp of rejection. It's there's something so wrong with that house that it's like the other buyers just they ran away from it. What is going on now? Let me show you the results that I get daily from a search that I set up for clients of homes that would make solid investments. The overlap that makes this particularly interesting is that these solid investment homes are also solid first and second time home buyer homes, especially a lot of the first time home buyers that bought in the burbs or the rural areas that are wanting to get more in the city because they realize that every hour they spend driving to and from work is a waste in Oklahoma City, unless you're going to something with great intentionality. So for most people who are moving back to the middle of the city, what you're looking at is this type of home. Let me flip around and let's dive in. So look at this. This is a fairly typical daily result for the search. And this is uh, under 250,000, looking for two to three beds, one to two baths, in well-located areas in the city. So, back on market, back on market, back on market, pending, back on market, price decrease, back on market, listing, new listing, new listing. So what this is, to put, put to, to put words to it, is this is any change to a listing. That could be a price increase, price decrease, something going from active to under contract, i.e. pending. It could be uh, pending to back on market, which means it was under contract and now it's back on market, or it could be a new listing. So this is any change to a listing in Oklahoma City that matches the search criteria. And so of the changes today, one, two, three, four, five of two, four, six, eight, ten, five of ten, fifty percent. Let's look at yesterday's back on market. I'm sorry, this is this is today's. Back on market. Back on market. Okay, so lower percentage. We've got eight total listings, and two of them are back on market. Three price decreases. That's interesting, isn't it? We haven't seen a lot of price decreases in a while. Hey, there's a head turner. 215000 for a three-bed, two-bath. Not bad. All right, let's look at it. this one. All right, just one new listing. Oh, that's multifamily. Here we go. Back on market. Back on market. Okay, so what, what I hope you see in this one, this is the wonkiest deal. I'll do a video on this sometime. The day before I got this update, I got a local wholesaler's uh, newsletter with this as their featured property and then I guess they didn't find the buyer that day and they probably wrote a contract that said we'll give you the seventy thousand dollars for it and we'll sell it in the next 24 hours and I guess they didn't get a contract for it and so it goes back on market wholesalers so often they're full of it but all right so why are we seeing this much back on market and what does it mean Things come back on market for a multitude of reasons. Most commonly before COVID, the reasons were uh, I did inspections and I didn't like what I saw in inspections, so I brought that to the seller and the seller said, eat dirt, we're not doing anything about it. Or seller says, yeah, the ACs are 59 years old, but they worked great for us or whatever. You know, some version of inspections, frightened buyers, inspections, frightened sellers, or inspections, everyone's okay, but we just couldn't come to terms. Back on market. Another so another version other than failed inspections or inspection related would be finance related. Um, recently had a deal where 
the buyer was well qualified, uh, had a pre-approval from the most noteworthy local bank, and then three days after going on their contract, they never turned in earnest money, and why not? Oh, well, the lender said that they could only approve them for half of the purchase price. Why? Because the buyer is self-employed. So the buyer is self-employed, so that original pre-approval conversation went like this. What do you make? Make about $212,000 a year. What do you owe? Well, we got one car payment. It's you know, $200 a month, and we rent right now. So, like, okay, well, yeah, this is a slam dunk. I'll write you the pre-approval. And so finance related. Buyer can't be pre-approved for the loan or loan terms change drastically during the contract period. So the buyer's not able to obtain adequate financing or the appraisal comes in low. You know, so finance related. So inspection related, finance related, and then sometimes, just sometimes, it's seller uh, related. You can call it title related. So the seller has an encumbrance on the, on the property. Maybe there's a dispute in the family as to how the property will be distributed or whatever. But seller related, that's probably the minority of the case with inspection related and financing related being the number one. But yet, what do we all fear? You know, get in the time machine, go back two years. What do we all fear? It's like, what's this horrible, horrible inspection related thing that's lurking obviously so deeply that the buyer was at first unaware, but they became aware. And then they said, honey, we're out. Well, that was two years ago. Let's talk about the gunslinging 2021. What has happened, you see, is that people have become so acutely tuned to doing business in this market. And it's a fantastic thing in this way. So often you have this, this laggard curve. And we saw this in, in 2020, where a lot of agents hadn't adjusted to the digital way of doing business. They hadn't started doing uh, you know, better photography and Matterport virtual tours and video tours and hosting live stream open houses and things like that. So you had this lag where, where the market had to catch up. Uh, and then you had this lag where buyers were still wanting to go see a home before offering as though, you know, hey, we, we have these pictures, we have this um, you know, this Matterport virtual tour, we have the video tour, we have Google Street View, we have the ability to drive by, we have the ability to pull data, we can see the pictures from the last time it sold. We, you know, we've got this litany of information, but we still need to feel the space because that's just mystical. And, and so it, it took a while before buyers had kind of rounded the corner and gotten to, hey, this is buying in 2020, this is buying in 2021. But now buyers are with it. Buyers are saying, hey, we've lost the last 10 houses we've looked at, so what's it gonna take? Well, you need to be willing to cross as many bridges as possible before seeing the property, and then let's go see it, ideally, when we're under contract, because there's only about a 10% chance we're gonna be under contract. And buyers, man, good job. The buyer base adjusted. But now here's where we are. We are fully adjusted to this. And buyers know, and that this is Oklahoma City, I hear this is like Little Rock, Arkansas, it's definitely Salt Lake City. Average days on market in Salt Lake County is down to three day, four days on market from three days. So that's nuts. That's, you go on market, you get multiple offers, you call for best and highest and you, you pick one on the fourth day. So we're an average of 11 days on market in, mo in many price points in Oklahoma City. And so what buyers have fully adjusted to is, hey, we've lost the last nine we've looked at. So let's, let's cross as many bridges as possible on the front end, and then let's go into contract. Let's offer what we can offer. And so most of the time what's happening is that buyers see a house, they go through their quick list, and they go, yep, let's do it and they offer on it. Sometimes though, the listing agent has said things like in their mind, well, it's a hot market, maybe I can skimp on my photography, or well, I would normally do a Matterport on this, but it's not worth the 350 extra bucks. The market's hot right now. And they have not provided honest, ethical representation of the property, but instead they've hired some glam photographer to take the the glam angles to make 
that tiny bedroom look so spacious and that make that awkward kitchen look perfect. And so the buyer falls in love with this story and because of the speed that we're moving at and because of the buyer's you know, diligence in adapting to buying in 2021 with a compressed inventory and low rates and insanity everywhere. Because we are in this base, what you're seeing is a ton of people go under contract and then see the house for the first time and go, and this is the weirdest thing. Nah, man, I was hoping X. And so now we, we've kind of swung back. So early 2021, we were firmly in the, if you get it under contract, just close. Like just, just do it because they're so hard to, to come by. And so if you get a home that's workable, you know, buy it. And so you had a higher percent of, of contracts going to closing. And now as we're heading you know, months into this, this situation or this, uh, this ethic of doing business, what we're starting to see is people are going, eh, I'm not in a hurry. There will be more. Maybe next year's the year, you know? Maybe next, we'll just keep looking. And so there's this, there's this, uh, like no fault cancellation thing. And, and because most states' contracts are written extremely buyer favored, where earnest money is fully refundable, uh, you know, for the whole inspection period and financing contingency periods and all, all that. So it's very buyer centric and buyers have, have known and fully embraced that. So it's kind of bred a wild, wild west, shoot first, ask questions later mindset with buyers of saying, yep, write the offer. This is the max we were pre-approved for, so we'll offer that. And then they go see it and they go, ha, nah, it's not worth that. We'll just keep looking. And so you're seeing a lot of things come back on the market because buyer's preference, not necessarily an inspection thing, or sometimes it's a, hey, I'm under contract, I've, I've got a, a deal like this right now, you might be watching, where, hey, we're willing to pay what you're asking, but what you're asking is the peak market value, and so we're gonna do our inspections, and we expect you to fix everything in exchange for your home selling at peak market value. And if you're not, but but most times the seller is on the other side of this narrative and they're going, the market's hot. Like, why would we do a bunch of repairs? Like, well, because you want peak value. If you want peak value, we're happy to give it to you because homes are scarce and interest rates are low. So we're happy to give you peak value, but we want a home to be in a proper condition. And so sometimes you just, you have this failure of, of minds to meet on the same page. And so there's lots, you know, there's lots of different reasons. What we're seeing right now is a lot of buyer inspection and buyer preference related back on markets. So what are we going to do about it? Are we going to change the way that we market our properties? For example, one of the things I'm experimenting with as an agent right now is for homes to remain active after they've gone under contract. It's in the best interest of the sellers, the sellers have re requested it. It's also in a situation where a buyer might be well well suited by that. Because if what happens is as soon as something goes under contract, most buyers have their filters set up to not see things that are under contract. I.e., when you're looking, you're not seeing those things that are pending. But if it's active, if it's on the market, but under contract accepting backup offers. Everyone's made aware that it's under contract, but then when it comes back on market, we don't activate the pre-2020 stigma of, ew, I wonder what's wrong with it. Maybe nothing. Maybe a buyer was shotgunning offers or maybe the buyer's agent was just pre-filling offers and sending out because they know that they're gonna have to offer on 10 or more properties to get the one that they want, that the buyers want. And then they know that that one might not close, so they might have to walk, you know, write 10 more offers. And so who knows the situation, but back on markets are definitely up. And we're seeing in the tail end of, of 2021 in Oklahoma City, we're starting to see more price decreases as well. And I think it, they're, they're related. I think that sellers have been riding this high and they've been saying, all right, we just keep going up in our price. And at, 
the end of the day, I mean, they, we are. Where the prices are still going up, but not as aggressively. And so these sellers who have tried to, to outpace and get ahead of the market, uh, they've also done that in the slowest time of the year. And so a lot of them have have taken what would normally be a feedback loop of, um, you know, hey, just hold on, know that the winter's slower. They've taken that and they've they've seen the lack of hysteria around their house and they've gone, we've only gotten two offers. It's been on the market for two weeks and they're panicking and they're, they're decreasing the price. So there's a lot of funny stuff, a lot of weird stuff going on in real estate right now. Back on markets, like it just the abundance of back on markets is a very interesting thing. And what I would tell you is that you might, as a home buyer or as a real estate investor, you might lean into back on markets and see some solidarity there. I think more than ever, we can know that back on market doesn't mean there's a body in the upstairs closet. It might, there might be a body in the upstairs closet, but it's not a guarantee versus in a more balanced market when you have, you know, yeah, when you had more balance, when it came back on market after two weeks, you go, oh, I think it's foundation. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the shoot first, ask questions later approach. Going into the fourth quarter, everyone's a little tired. Everyone's a little just quicker to go. Ah. And so maybe it works out. Maybe it's an opportunity for you to pick up a great home, either to live in or to rent out so that someone else can live in and that they can have an ethical, dignified landlord. And if you want help with the property management side, we'd love to do that for you. If you want to help with the brokerage side, we're here for that. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have some thoughts on the back on market splurge, let me know. What do you think is going to be the result of it? What do you think will be the future of it? Are we going to see more back on markets in the next in the next quarter and a half, two quarters, are we going to see less? Are we going to see less listings? What do you think's coming in the rest of the fourth quarter and the first quarter of next year? And if you're here, we'd love it if you'd subscribe so you can check out all of our new videos and all the nerdy, sometimes entertaining, usually nerdy and fun videos that we put out. And if you have some suggestions about real estate related content you'd love for me to dig into, put it in front of me. I look forward to it. Be well.